Hey folks, Dan Frio here with your market update for August 1st, 2024. So the Fed, they didn't reduce rates yesterday. They didn't really do anything but tee up a September rate drop. So mortgage rates are being affected by that right now. So we see mortgage rates down 10 basis points uh, to start the day. They'll probably go a little bit lower for today. But we do have a little bit of an economic news coming in right now. It's on the unemployment claims. Those are a little bit hotter than expected. Now, a lot of people are going to take this news and run with it saying, here, see, I told you the, the um, job market is going to be really, really, really bad. I'm going to give you a little bit more tidbits on that one to explain why there was a jump there. And then the manufacturing numbers just came in. So what I like to do is I like to take it over to CNBC. Rick Santelli, he comes out each morning and gives us the basically the breakdown of all the data that's came in and how the markets are being affected by that. So let's take it over to Rick Santelli at CNBC. He goes a little in depth on a lot of things. Uh, so bear with it because if it gets a little bit over your head, when we come back, um, I'm going to put this in terms that you guys can understand. And then we're going to see how the market's reacting to this. At the latter part of this video, I'm going to show you why people choose us, why people choose us to help them with their mortgage, because we can do one application, one credit pool, and we can uh, basically check about 50 different lenders throughout the entire country. These are banks, credit unions, and lenders to help you navigate, to help you find that lowest rate and lowest fees out in the market. So I'm gonna show you a unique system that we use, but first off, let's let Rick tell us about what the heck's going on in the economy and the markets this morning. So Rick, take it away, buddy. Rick Santelli is standing by at the CME in Chicago. Rick, we're a little bit early, but you know, it's interesting the moves that we've seen in the yield curve. We saw the 10-year reach as low as 4.03% yesterday. I know you're watching that. We're seeing a whole shift lower in the curve. Yes, we are. And what's fascinating is it hasn't really inverted significantly considering how bullish prices have pushed down yields. We're at minus 23. Our best close so far in the cycle was minus 14. So we've given up about eight basis points with respect to the market watching rates go down. So bear market, bull market, we see that the yield curve is being pressured. Here we go, non-productivity, second quarter preliminary, up 2.3%, well above the under 2% expected, and it really is significantly stronger than the last quarter. Uh, the first quarter last uh, was one year, one year since we had such weak productivity up two tenths. You had to go back to uh, Q4 uh, of uh, 23. Now, let's look at what's going on with unit labor costs, much lower than expected. We we're looking for a number around 1.8 comes in half that, a 0.9, a 0.9. Now, 0.9 is the uh, lowest uh, going back to the last quarter of last year as well. So minus 2.8 was Q4 of 23. That was the biggest negative, the biggest drop going all the way back to Q3 of 2020. So this is a pretty good number. Now, we do see some subtle revisions, but nothing huge. Productivity on the first quarter final moves from two tenths to up four tenths, so almost half one percent, and unit labor costs move down two tenths from four percent to 3.8. Now let's look at claims, shall we? On initial claims, 249,000. That's up 14,000 from at least up to this point, unrevised 235,000. 249,000 would be the hottest number going all the way back to August of 23 when we were at 258,000. Continuing claims, well, let's see. We now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the eighth consecutive week above 1.8 million. 1,877,000 to be exact, follows a slightly revised 1,844,000. 1,877,000 would be the highest level going back to November of 21. So we see once again uh, that we are under pressure with regard to continuing claims moving higher. We see that uh, initial claims, even though a little bit better behaved, is now starting to hover around that 250,000 just below it. That is psychologically significant. And we see productivity. Now, these levels are pretty good, but I do want to put one thing out there real quick. If you do look at productivity, what you would like to do is compare it to pre-COVID. So here we are up 2.3 in our second quarter preliminary. If you look at the second quarter of 2019, it was 2.6. If you look at the last quarter of 2019, it was 3.6. So we see we're kind of getting back in that range. 2019 was a good year for productivity. Interest rates continue to move down, Melissa Lee. We're here now at 402 and a 10. Uh, we see that the uh, pre-opening equities have firmed up a bit. 
and we want to pay close attention to that psychological level at 4%. I personally didn't think that we would spend much time under 4%. I will stick with that, but there is a real tailwind based on the seeding of uh, cuts by the Federal Reserve and yesterday's testimony by the chairman. Didn't come out and say it, but he certainly did, as Tyler Matheson said, tee up the ball for cuts at the next meeting. So that's what the news is reflecting today. But I do want to take a little bit of a dive into the jobless claims. You see it right through here. Jobless claims jumped nearly one, uh, one higher nearly one high of 249,000, so whatever that means. But there's a reason for it. So you're going to have a lot of people just jumping on this bandwagon. But if you go down through here, the big chick picture, higher is taping it off and wages are rising more slowly in the cooling labor markets with layoffs are still uh, low historically. What happened was there was uh, a lot of manufacturing jobs that basically were retooling and things like that. So they had layoffs during that time. And that's what it's saying right through here. So it's not an anomaly. It's not, you know, the, the world is in. It's basically just some man, big manufacturing companies retooling. Those people went on uh, unemployment claims for a week or two, and that's what caused this number to jump. So I give you all the news, nothing but the news and the true news behind everything. So that's what's going on right now. We go over to the, the markets. Treasury yields continue to drop. So this means interest rates continue to drop. We go over to my chart right through here. This is the MBSs. What this is is a mortgage-backed security bond. Okay, so what this does is it tells us exactly what's going to go on with mortgage rates. This this is the price of the bond right up through there. So what we focus in on, can you, if you squint, you can see the plus 11 there. That means the price of the bond is up. All you need to know is this, okay? If prices of a bond go up, any bond, it means the yield comes down. Okay, so we love when this number goes up. Let's look at a two-day chart. You're going to see, whoa, look at this. Okay, so we saw right through here, it was flat up until the markets, uh, the, the Fed came out yesterday and told us what they're going to do. And then it just rallied, 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 rallied. And all, remember, all the way up. Rates are coming down. So that's what you're seeing right through there. You go over to the uh, markets right now. The Dow Jones is down 155. That was a bigger drop than when I started this. S&P 500 is up 10. NASDAQ 74. So nothing really going on here. Let's check oil. Now, oil is going to be spiking a little bit right now because of the, the unrest in the Middle East. So that's what's going on. And then we've got crypto. It's falling off a cliff already. So it's between 64 and 70,000. It just fits where it fits. So now what I want to explain to you is one of the reasons why people use us. Okay, one of the biggest reasons is right through here. So what is this? This is how we can help you. Okay, this is what we do behind the scenes. This was what makes us different. Okay, so a lot of times here's what you're thinking. I need to get pre-approved. Okay, so, and I need to find who's got the best rate. It's like getting your house painted or getting your car worked on. You want to get four, five, six, seven different quotes because it's like, okay, what's your charge is going to be and what's all this stuff? Well, how about if you could go to one place, just one place? Okay, so if you're applying for a mortgage, your concern is I got to fill out all these applications. I got to have everybody pull my credit. My credit scores are going to get hammered. And then I get all these quotes coming in. I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. Why don't you just use us? Okay, so it's going to be one application, one credit pool, and we're going to search the basically almost the whole country to figure out who's got the best rates for you. So I work at ServeBank. Okay, it's a federal bank. So I'm federally licensed, meaning I can work with anybody throughout the whole country, doesn't matter where you live. But here's the unique piece of this is we're one of the country's largest mortgage brokers. So here's what we do for you. We'll, the, our focus is to get you approved and coach you from the day your application comes in to the day you get keys in your hand. But how do we assure that you're getting a good rate and competitive fees? Well, this is what we do behind the scenes. So what we do is we get you approved and then we go into this search engine. It's called Loan Sifter. Okay, we plug in your data through here. So I'm going to go through here and give you an, an analysis of what we're doing right now. So we're down through here and we're saying, okay, we have somebody that's looking to buy a $350,000 home. They're a first time home buyer. So they only need 97, they're going to get 97% financing. So it means they only need 3% down. 3%, okay? They have a 740 credit score. They're a first time home buyer. And I just put in some other miscellaneous information. All right, so what we do then is we hit this and we hit submit. So now what it's doing, it's searching all these banks' rates and electronically and finding us rates throughout the whole country. So here's where they are. And you're going to notice one thing. After all these, the names of these companies, you're going to see wholesale. Okay. Wholesale means you can't get there. You can't go to Provident. You can't go to a lot of these companies and deal with the wholesale side because wholesale is like joining Costco. Okay. You ever go to Kroger's or your normal grocery store and you buy something and let's say it's coffee and coffee's 10 bucks, but then you go to Costco and the same coffee is $6. 
Why can they get it to you so cheap? Well, they do in bulk. They do a lot of business. They do business in the wholesale sector. So this is what we can do for you. We can get, even if you go to these places directly, we can get you a better rate and lower fees. Okay, so here's what it does. This is the same client. Okay, the same criteria. You're going to see a huge difference here. All right, so you're going to go down through here and you're going to see these lenders right through here. Provident, Resi Central, Rocket, SunWest, Orion, SunWest, Resi Central, Arc, 11 Mortgage, Flagstar, uh, Ring, um, Resi Central, United Wholesale, Penny Mac, Kind Lending, all these, and it, it goes on and on and on. Okay, here's the unique thing about this. Let's go through. I'm going to get my head out of the way for a second so you guys can understand this. Let me go to the top. So this is saying right now, if you worked with me, I can put your loan through Provident Funding and get you a rate based on the criteria above at 6.375. There'd be a $500 lender fee and that's it, okay? This same borrower, if they, if they called one of these other places, so let's just go down. So we're at 6.375, 6 that's the rate with no fees. All right, you scroll down. Let's just say, well, let's say, for example, you didn't know who any of these companies were. So you're like, okay, Dan, I called Kind Lending and got a rate quote. I'm getting 6.375 also. Well, with them, you'd be right through here. You would, you would need to pay $4,132 to get that rate. It's the same, same loan criteria as you have up through here. So why would you want to spend $4,000 when you can spend nothing. So this is basically why people use us, okay? So here's one of the things uh, that I wanted to show you guys today. What would be the difference in your payment from if you would have bought the house at 8% in, in uh, October versus what rates are today? So I did a little analysis. And so right now, we our average purchase price is about 350,000. Uh, right now, I'm doing an analysis in Pennsylvania. I just picked a state. So you go down through here. Here's where uh, the here's what it would look like if you bought the house in October. Okay, so you'd put three percent down because you're a first time home buyer. The rates eight percent because remember we went over here and the rates right down through here are eight percent. Okay, we go back um, over through here. Where did it go? I apologize. Uh, let's go to that. And we're at eight percent, and we go down through here. You're going to need PMI because you're only putting down three percent. And you go down through, and what would your payment be? Well, I'll get to that in one second. So let's compare it if you were to buy today, okay, at a rate at six seven. Again, I'm taking these rates right from here. We were at eight oh five. Now we're at six point seven. All right, so that's where we're we are right through there. What's the difference? Well, over a ten year period, over a ten year period, you'd save forty about forty five. $45,000 by buying today versus buying in October. Now, I'm not saying today is a perfect time to buy. I'm just showing you the savings that you would have. So what's the difference in your payment? We'll scroll down through here and I can show that to you right through here. Your payment would have been almost 3,200 bucks. What's it now? 2,900 bucks. What's the difference? Well, I went to chat GPT and here it is. If I went from 3,189 so 2884, how much would that savings be? A savings of nine and a half percent on your payment. So just want to give you some analysis of what we do, how we do things, and how maybe waiting might have paid off for you. So that is my report for today. My name is Dan Frio. You saw what I do for a living. I'm a mortgage, uh, I, call, I call myself a mortgage advisor because I don't want to just be your loan officer. I want to help navigate you through, like I said, from the day you put your application in to the day you get your keys in your hand. So if you want to check us out, me and my team, go to the rateupdate.com. Here it is. I'm going to ask you one thing. If you're looking to buy, if you're looking to buy your first house, click the grant finder right up there. It's going to find you grants up to $6,500 that are basically free money. You can use that money for your down payment or closing costs. But if you want to get, get rolling with this, what I ask you is please don't disqualify yourself. Okay, check it out. If you're interested in buying in 2024, maybe 2025, check it out. Hit the apply now button. You're going to schedule a consultation call with us, or you can even call in. So if you'd like to call in, just talk to one of our mortgage advisors. It's going to be me, Dave, or Alan. There's no call center. It's just the three of us that will answer the phone and answer any questions that you got. You can scroll down to the bottom of our website if you want to find our 800 number. Number, it's right here. It's 844-775-5626. Or you can email me directly at dan at the rateupdate.com. So thanks so much for watching, guys. God bless. Have a fantastic afternoon. I'll be back at the closing bell to let you guys know, did rates go any lower for today? Thanks so much for watching. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.